Would you like to use the camera feature in OpenTunes to move around in two and three dimensions but don't know how? Or maybe you know how to use the camera but would like a more flexible way? Well stay tuned as we animate the OpenTunes camera on the X sheet. So we'll start off by setting up a simple scene with a couple of characters and a background. So there we are. I'll split the scene into different levels so we can see the three dimensional camera working. I've got a background layer I've got a mid layer with the trees there, a foreground layer of closer trees, and the characters and the two speech bubbles that are there to show the conversation between the two characters and to represent the animation throughout the scene. So let's take a look at the scene in the 3D viewer. Now you can move around the scene using the standard movement controls with spacebar and then the mouse to move around. Shift and space zooms in and out, and control and space rotates the view. So I've set up each of the levels by going to the first frame, choosing each level, choosing the animate tool and then select position that you want to animate. Hold down control and then click and drag left and right. OK, so we've switched to a different room and I've created one that's got all the tools that I need here. It's got the X sheet, the function editor and the in-camera view. So what I'd like to do is to hold the camera for the first few frames, then do a slow zoom in, and then at the point where the first person speaks, I'd like to zoom into that one character, and then the second person speaks, and I'll change to that character. Same for the next two, and then a slow zoom out. So the camera's already set up for frame one, exactly as I need it. I'm going to hold it to frame six, and then change on seven. So if we go to frame 6, all we need to do is to make sure that the camera is selected. Add a key, and that adds a key for the camera for each of the items to where they currently are. Now we only need the east, west and north, south positions, and then the Z. So if we click and drag across the rest of the values, you can just hit delete. So we've only got the three columns showing. And that makes it easier to work with. So the first six frames the camera holds still, then I want it to zoom in slowly up to 24, so I'll go to 24, and we'll adjust the camera to where I want it to be on 24. Now you can click and drag around, and you'll notice the three dimensionality that we've already put into the scene. And then if you hold control and drag left and right again, you can zoom in and zoom out. So we'll zoom in to where we want it to be, Click and drag to make sure the characters are in the centre. Uh, this created keys on those three columns that we set up earlier. And if you view the frames between 6 and 24, and then back to 6, you'll see the camera zooming in. Now if we change the camera view, you can see it much more clearly. OK, let's add the other camera moves. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a key at the start of the move, adjusting the camera, and then adding a key at the end of the move again, and then move to the next camera position. And as you edit, you notice the key has this blue stripy line over it. This lets you know that only some of the values have changed. If you want them all to change on 138, just press the key and it copies the previous values down, even though they haven't changed, and it shows a solid blue. OK, so let's take a look at that. Back to the very beginning. If we go to the camera view, we'll get a better look of this. And hit play. So we've got a slow zoom in. We'll go to the first character, the one on the right, the one on the left, both together. And after a short pause, a slow zoom out. Then a pause to the end. Good, so that worked really well. So you can use the camera like this, and it works perfectly fine. But the only issue I have is that you can't see the camera movements at all on the X sheet. So if you make a change to the animation on the X sheet, you've got to go to the Function Editor, 
and then move the camera movements here to where you want them to be to align with the new animation on the egg sheet. And it makes it really tricky to keep them in sync and you can't see them both on the same grid. It'd be better if you could see the camera on the egg sheet and there's a way you can do that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll delete the camera movements from the function editor. So we'll start from square one, click and drag over them all and hit delete. And you'll notice that the camera view went back to the default state. So let's change the standard view. Now what we need to do is if we go to the animation tab, you'll see things a lot clearer. We'll add a new vector column and we'll call this DT cam just so it's labelled differently from the standard camera. And we'll change the column name as well. And I'll extend this to the end of the animation. So that's 168 frames. So if we right click on there and choose time stretch and change that to instead of lasting one frame to last 168. Right, what we need to do next is to draw a rectangle around the camera line on there. And select it and make sure it's all outside of the line because we don't see that in the camera view at all. So I'll change the other sides as well. Now I've changed the colour of it so it's easier to see and make it red. Now what we need to do in the schematic view is simply to parent the main camera off our new fake camera level. Then the real camera will follow every movement of our pretend camera. So we want to follow the same movements as the previous animation, which was to leave the camera in one place for the first six frames, then on frame seven start zooming in towards the first chap on the left. So we'll go to frame seven and we'll add a key which holds the camera exactly where it is. And you'll notice it's at a key on frame seven on the X sheet. So we'll slowly zoom in again using the control key and we'll click and drag to the left. And that's it, it's at a key on frame 24. And if we drag from frame seven to 24, we'll see the zoom happening. Then again on frame 25, we want to zoom in only on the first person. So we drag the new camera box to here, zoom in to exactly where we want, making sure to not have the second character in there, so we only have what we need. And we want the camera to stay on that person until just after they finish speaking. So we'll add a key there. And I'll continue through the rest of the animation, adding the keys and moving the camera around to where we want it to be. Again, let's take a look at that. We'll turn to the camera view. So the camera doesn't move for the first few frames, then it slowly zooms in, then it focuses on the left person, the right person, the left person again, and then both together with a slow zoom out at the end to finish. So it's worth mentioning that you can still use the function editor to edit any of the values. So if I expand that slightly wider so I can see them all, If we delete the unused columns, which gives us a simple view, that's it. And then if you right click on the column, you can choose to show only the animated rows. So at the very top, you can see, you can see the north, south, east, west, and the Z value. So you can still move around keyframes by clicking and dragging in here. You can edit the type of keyframe so if I highlight all of these cells in a row, you can see that it's set as a constant tween. You can change it to ease in, ease out, or speed in, speed out, and click apply. And if you click this at the top of the function editor to see the function curves control, you can choose fit selection from the context menu, and then it fills a full window with it, the entire graph. You can click and move each of these points to move the keys forwards and backwards between frames or to increase and decrease the values. So it shows the frames across the top and the values down the left. So if I choose frame 24, which is here on the right, if you watch the key, 
If I move it backwards and forwards, you see the key going up and down in the cells on the X sheet. If I move up and down, it changes the value. So I'll undo that and close the window. So the final thing to mention is that if you change the animation and want to move your keyframes to match, you can do by clicking on them, selecting them one at a time and moving it around. Or you can select one, press shift and then select the second one. And as you drag one, they both move together. So you can easily insert some animation and then move the keyframes down. So that's moving the camera in two and three dimensions on the X sheet. In my next video, I'll show you some more tricks with the camera. See you soon. That's the Darren T.